We gotta keep going and hope for the best. Walking the streets, just you and me. Trying to fill the void, trying not to bleed. Sometimes life just moves too slow. You gotta find a reason to push it and go. You know we're trying our best to be a success. We're living our life trying to clean the mess. Cause I'm stuck in this road. Hey Journeys, where y'all been? It's Unique and I'm back with another video. So today I want us to come on and bring y'all a chit chat, get ready with me and y'all can see how I get ready for work on a Friday. It's pretty much going to be just a chatty talk through of me sharing some of my life experiences with y'all, dropping gems and reaching that and helping y'all along your own personal journeys to be the best version of yourself. If y'all are interested in seeing how I achieve this look, then definitely stay tuned. Hey, Journeys. She is all natural, okay? She is all natural. I am about to do a chit-chatty, get ready with me with y'all so that y'all can see what I do to get ready for work. It is 8.30 a.m. and this is when I technically start my day. Disclaimer, excuse my rap. I just didn't want to come on here looking like I didn't have a haircut in too much. So, I'm just going on with my pixie glow. I actually wake up at 5 in the morning, you guys. Not 5 on a dot. Anywhere between, I would say, 5.15 to right a little before 6. That's when I generally wake up. So, when I use the air quotes about starting my day, this is when I start, like, doing my makeup, shower, getting dressed, you know what I'm saying? Breakfast, packing my lunch. So, yeah. I ain't gonna lie. I hate putting the products in the description box. Any other YouTubers who do makeup videos, just, oh, it's just one of those things that's like, heads off to y'all booty. I said booty. Heads off to the booty gurus. <laughs> heads off to y'all beauty gurus. If y'all see me looking this way, that's because that is where the mirror is. And I'm going to be honest. This camera on my phone does not really pick up close. If y'all see me looking down, y'all know I got like the handheld or whatever. But yeah, so it's been a great productive morning. I'm so proud of myself. The bed is made. I've been doing it for about a week now. And I was inspired by this girl on Instagram. And y'all can check the description box down below for the post. It's really short, honestly. It was two things that she said that... um. Oh my gosh, y'all. My text messages lately has been so interesting. <laughs> um, It was literally two things that she said that made me like, wow, I really need to be making my bed, bro. <laughs> and it was just one of those things that I was taught. But y'all know how I am. I be like, unique, who are you going to be? Are you going to be the old unique or the new unique? And the new unique makes her bed, period, poo. I was asking Rhea yesterday, like, Sis, where does period poo come from? If y'all don't know, I live under a rock. I'm not really into pop culture. I don't be knowing what's going on in media or anything like that. Like, I have YouTube, yes. I have Instagram and all of these little accounts and stuff. But to be honest, I don't really keep up with what is going on. Um... I just hear things and pick up things and it's kind of like I'll start saying it and don't know where the hell it came from. But <laughs> Reed had told me yesterday on Twitter, if y'all are not following me on Twitter, what is you doing, baby? Because my Twitter, that's where all the gems is. And that's where I have all of my little rants, my inner thoughts. Twitter is like my electronic journal. Period. So if y'all want to know like the ins and outs of what goes through Unique's mind, go and follow me on Twitter. What is you doing and why is you playing? Twitter is bae. <laughs> that, after YouTube, I would say that is my favorite app of them all. What is y'all favorite app like of them all? So in your phone right now, if you had to pick one app, which one would you pick and why? Leave a comment in the comment section down below. I will pick Twitter. I've been on Twitter since 2009 and I like it because I'm a talker. If y'all haven't noticed, I'm a talker. I 
be chatting. I like Twitter because I be chatting. Point blank period poo. I could say pretty much whatever I want. They extended the characters. They also added where you can add tweets to a tweet. So if you have one thought and a continuing thought, you can add the tweet there like, ah! it's bomb. And I would say about 98% of the people that be on my timeline, I don't know where they came from or how they got there, but my timeline stay lit. <laughs> I laugh, I cry, I retweet until I can't no more. I have so many like virtual bays on there that just makes my soul curl. I found this one and she has a YouTube channel as well and she's like my new woman crush Wednesday. And I was telling Reed like, oh my gosh, I found this girl and she is Ideal Bay. I didn't know what Ideal Bay was, you know? I had few things that I knew that I liked in a person, but honestly y'all, before I started this new journey that I'm on, a lot of the things that I liked in relationships were very superficial. And I was a conditioned lover, you know what I'm saying? I didn't know how to really love people unconditionally. I honestly love people for what they could do for me, what they could give me, what they look like. And when I say look like, I don't mean, um, well, in some cases I'm referring to physical appearance, but look like in a way as to how they looked to the outside, you know what I'm saying? But I really didn't like look at heart or essence or spiritual beingness and I think now sorting out what it is that I like well what I went for before is what I don't like <laughs> so um that that narrows it down and it's okay to know what you don't like because that will get you closer to what it is that you do like i was talking to one of uh, my supporters and journeys and she was asking me what it is that i go for a personality or looks and i was saying like initially before i started this journey that i'm on now like the old uni she would go for both in a way and i had to explain because I was like, this might sound kind of weird, like both, what you mean both? I previously was a conditioned lover, right? So I would go for somebody that's cute because that's how they look to other people and it was kind of like, you score gold because they find a you know what I'm saying? <laughs> and what I told her was, I said, those people was fine as but they didn't respect me and they treated me like They also cheated on me. And that goes along with me having a low sense of self-worth and confidence about myself. So it was easier for people to like uh, play me. And I'm talking in situations where I didn't play myself, you know, where I wasn't really naive or blinded. Like they honestly just was cheaters and liars and over. So a lot of the cute people that I dated, I dealt, I dealt with that with them or not being like their only person, having to share them with other girls or stuff like that. And when I went for somebody that wasn't cute, I had this stigma that if you date somebody ugly who was a nerd, who was smart, when you get married, they would make a lot of money and they'll be able to take care of you. And a lot of times I sort out my needs and my survival and my security uh, outside of myself to other people and wanted other people to provide that for me because I didn't want to be the one to provide my own stability and security. So I would date people who didn't um, fit the status quo of cute or fine or sexy because they would give me stuff. In school, they would do my homework or they will write my papers. What else? Just pure malice and manipulation. And if y'all haven't watched my girl talk that I posted a few days ago, check the description box because I'll have a link to it there. And I was telling y'all how um, in a lot of my relationships, my intentions weren't good. They, were, they came from malice or bad intent and so when I would date people for their personality and who they was it was honestly conditional upon the fact that how can I benefit from this in a manipulative way for you to benefit me like 
what do I have to settle for for you to give me stuff or do stuff for me? Like very, I was a very, very conditional lover. And can we call that love though? For real, like is conditional love love at all? Love is supposed to be patient, it's supposed to be kind, it's supposed to be long lasting, it's supposed to be unconditional. So can one say that uh, you really love the person under conditional circumstances or did you love what they could give or what they could do for you, not because of who they were or, and who they are. So what I had to explain was that yes in the past i went for looks and personality for two totally different reasons at the end of the day those relationships they didn't work out for me because of the simple fact that i went into it with bad intentions and i also went into it searching for something that was not inside of myself so being in a relationship and not being a whole and complete being within yourself it could cause some major problems in that relationship because for one if i think of all the relationships that i ever had in my entire life i would say that none of them i felt fulfilled I always wanted something more. When I dated someone in society's eyes who was ugly, I would get bored with them and I would want something more and then I would go and find me somebody cute and I would cheat on the ugly person with the cute person. And then the cute person would cheat on me with somebody else. <laughs> and it was kinda like, mine's not mine. It was really a bad cycle for me that started i would say maybe in like 2014 up until just last year you know what i'm saying where i was in this constant karmic cycle i dated the same people all my life none of them were different because i never changed and i would get the same person uh every time i would switch persons because i never took the time to change myself and it wasn't into the point where i was like okay well, I, I had help, and I'm not going to take, like, full credit. So, somebody had to, like, bring this to my attention. And then I had to make the choice as to what it was that I was going to do with the new information that was presented to me as to how I had been navigating every single relationship in my life since 2014 when I started dating. No, it wasn't 2014. I'm a liar. It was not no damn 2014. When did I go to um, high school? 2008. My first, I never felt empty with him, honestly. I didn't. Like, we didn't have issues of uh, infidelity or anything like that. Like, he was head over heels for me and I was head over heels for him. But I guess at some point, we just had this idea that we are supposed to explore other people. So we came to a mutual agreement that we weren't going to date anymore because we wanted to see what other people was like. And um, <laughs> I'm happy he went on and did that because uh, my man's got kids and stuff now and I'm not going to be able. <laughs> I'm not going to be able to have no kids right now. So um, I'm glad he just went on about his, his business because uh, I just, I won't be able. <laughs> <laughs> so I've been in a constant um, cycle of dating people who were all the same because I didn't change. And so it wasn't until it was brought to my attention and then I made the decision like I'm not going to be like this anymore. Moving forward, I'm really going to date people for unconditional reasons for just them being a whole being <laughs> and them to compliment who I am. I have to be 100% in myself before I can date anybody else. Today, June the 21st, 2019, I do not feel whole and complete in myself, hence why I cannot be dating nobody right now. Point blank, period. I am not whole and complete in myself. I do not have space to be available for another being because I'm sorting through my own mess. I'm sorting through this mess of my life. These karmic cycles, this childhood trauma, this unfulfillment, this like straight up just grief, mourning, and sadness of all of my relationships that came 
before this point you know what i'm saying and it's years and years and years of hurt heartbreak pain just huh, manipulation rejection that i'm sorting through and dealing with and i'm so grateful for my spiritual mentor who is like a big sis to me she has truly helped me in a magnificent way to see the other side of myself and to cut the bull and get out of like flaky behavior and she basically said unique you have to be in or out what the f are you gonna do okay she didn't say that but <laughs> pretty much you know what are you going to do? Like, are you going to change your way of being and embrace the new person who you are saying that you are? Or are you going to keep in this cycle that you've been in since 2008 and repeating the same drama with different people? Like, and I can say that once I started doing my work, the quality of people that's been coming into my life since I started using my work is like... So, I know when my next love come in, I know they're going to be, like, amazing because I'm amazing. I'm dope. I'm doing my work. And by that time, I'm going to be a whole 100% person, complete unto myself, okay? <laughs> and I won't need them to give me shit. I'm just going to uh, experience them, you know? Not possessing nobody, not owning nobody, none of that. I am going to just experience them in a very deep, soul-quenching, loving way. Like, that is what I invite into my life. I invite in a love that is unconditional. It is whole and complete. It complements who I am and my greatest version. It helps me learn, grow, evolve and experience new that's exactly what i invite in and i'm so excited and ready for it like oh it's not easy y'all i've been getting tested oh my gosh the universe conspires to help you but at the same time the tests and the challenges will come and i've been so tested as to lately but i have to stick to my guns like okay you need stop playing stop being with the bullshit you know no placeholders <sighs> and it makes me so mad i'm thinking about the last fling that i had and it was so challenging for me to let go of it and release it like oh my gosh i felt like somebody was taking my candy away and i knew that this person was not good for me i knew that they did not serve my highest good and it wasn't going to help me to evolve because this person was not ready to do their work but i was feeling like my candy was being taken away from me and i wanted to be stuck in a mess because I was so used to not being treated in a way that was like royal or top notch. I was so used to being second best to somebody in their life. It was a comfort zone for me. So for me to step out of that comfort zone and say, no, I'm not going to allow you to treat me like this. I'm not going to continue to be here to enable your behaviors to serve as a distraction for you and allow you to serve as a distraction for me when I'm trying to be spiritually evolving in my life and I'm trying to grow on new levels and there's so much work that I have to do while I'm here and afforded this opportunity in this 3D world but I can't do that laid up with you on weekends like and you're not trying to do the work that I'm trying to do period so you gotta go and I thought they were the cutest thing in the world okay they were just drop dead gorgeous to me they were so beautiful charming they had a way with words that's my love language if y'all don't know I love words like of affirmations I love a charmer <laughs> but it was so funny because like I said I dated the same kind of people and um the first 
the first woman that I was in a relationship with, she was also a charmer, but in a manipulative way. And so the last person that I was dealing with, they were just like her in that sense. Does that make sense? So y'all can see how I say me being in relationships of my past, I was dating the same people over and over because that was just like a weakness for me and I had to overcome that. So I'm going to tell y'all the moment as to when I saw Shawty as ugly. <laughs> and I never thought I would see Shawty ugly. The moment I saw Shawty ugly is when we was having a conversation and I was telling her like, y'all, I need my liner. Hold on. Conversation. We were back to this like, you're a distraction for me. I have to let you go. I can no longer see you anymore. She did not understand like, oh my gosh, she did not understand how she was a distraction for me. She was like, you still go to work? You still get your stuff done? I'm like, no, not that base level, surface level distraction. Y'all can see, that's just still, still make me mad to this day. Like, why are you trying to play so blind and dumb? You know what the f I'm talking about. You are a distraction on the point as to what I cannot do my self-nurturing and my own self-care and my own work on myself. Like, I'm not spending time alone, so I'm not addressing the traumas that I experience in my life. I'm not uh, assessing myself. I'm not self-reflecting. I'm not um, doing the things that I love and enjoy. And neither am I nurturing myself. And neither am I addressing my shadow side or doing my shadow work or anything like that. Like, I can't see anything clearly if I'm in a situation shit with you, basically. That's what I had to tell her. And she was like, I don't understand. This is not fair. And I'm like, I know. It's not easy for me either, but this is a challenge. I have dealt with your kind. <laughs> ah, it's making me hot. I have dealt with your kind since 2008. I am sick of it. It's been over a decade of me dating you. I've only known you for three years, but it's been over a decade of me dealing with your kind and of me not passing this test. I am going to pass this test in 2019, even if it kills me. If I died that day, I would say, I did what I was supposed to do. I passed that test, but I did not die because there are more tests and there are more challenges that's going to present themselves to me. But in the avenue of being with somebody for conditional reasons and being with somebody for what they can provide to me, not for who the person is. And actually, when I do see that person, seeing them for who they show me that they are and not creating this narrative or this illusion as to who that person is. When I am going into situations now, I don't look at somebody for how cute they are. I want to feel their energy. I want to feel their vibe. Her vibe wasn't ugly to me until I stopped lying to to myself and saying that she was more than what she was and stop putting her on a pedestal and saying that she was more than what she was when in reality she was really really miserable and she was really really sick and I hope that she gets the healing that she needs and I really send her lots of love and blessings and abundance and peace and I send her a space of forgiveness I hope that she is able to forgive and I hope that she is also able to trust and I hope that she also allows herself that vulnerability and uh, the emotional work that needs to be done into her life because honestly it's making her sick and it's killing her but she is not ready to address that so I just hope that um, she finds that peace that she's looking for but I cannot help her do that and I had to make that decision and I had to say, I cannot help you through this. And she wanted me to help her through that. I cannot help you through this because my burden is not light enough for me to be present with you in this way. The burden that I have to sort through and my own self-love and my own self-care and my own self-nurturing is so much bigger than your bullshit. And I don't have space to do the work for me and also sort through your book with you simultaneously. I cannot be a friend in that way. I cannot help you. You have to do the work on your own. The moment where I came to that realization with my damn self is when I was able to let her go. Because I saw me and her that day when I told her that she was a distraction for me and she still asked to have sex with me. 
and she still tried to make a pass at me and when I told her to get off of me and that I didn't want it that is what made me see her as ugly when she begged me to come and ride with her and go with her or when she begged me to come over when she begged me to just let her stay around that's when she became ugly in that moment i was able to listen to my intuition and i was also able to take the blinders off that i had on for so long as it related to this person this kind of person because she is not the first she is not the first and when I didn't allow her to let sex be her power over me she was then powerless because those were the only cards that she knew how to play physical cards with sex and that's how she was able to manipulate and charm and whatever and yeah it was good <laughs> it was great but I had to make the choice was I gonna be the old unique or the new unique did I want to continue to be manipulated through sex or did I want to move on with my life and be a better person and stop being so closed minded and conditional when it came to the energies that I was having in my life. That was just an experience that I went through personally you guys. Like I said I've dated this type of person many times before in my life so I have way more stories. I'm in my process of healing, so if y'all want to hear, like, about different scenarios, but under that same type of energy, then definitely let me know in the comment section down below, because I've dated that type of person over and over and over, and it wasn't, it wasn't until I made the decision that I wanted to change, and I stuck to my guns, and I stopped lying to myself, and I cut the illusion, and I took off the, um rose colored glasses to see the person for who they truly were and not who I wanted them to be it wasn't until that point where I was able to um, release myself from such a toxic situation and move forward with my life in a better direction for my future ask yourself today who am I going to be what do I deserve what am I going to accept ask yourself today do I see myself with this person in this condition in 10 years from now, 5 years from now, 3 years from now? Ask yourself that. Yes. When I started looking at those things on a timeline, I knew that that person wasn't for me. All I do, and y'all know I'm not a hair connoisseur, so don't judge me. Do not judge me. Just take it from the back piece right here and then I'll center it where I want it to go in the front and then I'll just push the lace down into the um, hairline that way it can stick it could have been a little more tacky I did use a lot more glue than usual but it's okay I've been doing the half up half down style but I'm just gonna wear it down today and give my mama her scrunchie back that she probably didn't, didn't even realize was gone. Because <laughs> I sure did come up on it. Yep, sure did. Came right up on it. So yeah, journeys, I hope that y'all enjoyed this chit chat. Get ready with me and you were able to learn something along the way. Now, this is how I get ready on Friday specifically or a day when I just feel like I want to do a little more enhancements. Uh, generally, I wouldn't spend that much time on the makeup, but I was talking to you guys and everything like that. I do like these simple little looks. I forgot to finish it off. You can put this on your body too. If you really see, if y'all really about this shining, 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 y'all. Hey, hey, all of this winning. Okay, I didn't do lashes today, but it's totally cool. I have on a little bit of mascara and I did some black eyeliner, which is fine. So yeah, this is the final look. If y'all want to see more chit chat, get ready with me on my channel, then definitely let me know in the comment section down below. I think this is like one of my favorite type of videos to do. So if it's something that y'all want to see more frequently, let me know in the comment section down below and I'll be happy to 
rechat and get the video out for you guys don't forget to like comment and subscribe if you haven't already drop a gem in the comment section down below of something that i said in this video that truly resonated with you i hope that y'all really enjoyed this video because it was definitely some moments of vulnerability in it and i didn't even know we was gonna go there but we went there and that's okay i just want to reach out and help y'all along the way of your own personal journeys and sharing my experiences and letting y'all know that you can get through it and it's definitely possible to see the light at the end of the tunnel and you can also see that the grass is greener when you water it either you're gonna feed the old you or you're gonna feed the new you the only one that will thrive is the one that you feed which part of you are you going to feed today thank y'all so much for watching this video and i'll see y'all tomorrow for another one bye journeys